Hello, this is Carrie Logan at Empowered Within. So let's review the brain. In this wonderful book written by Robin Rose called Shifting Gears, she gives a really good example of our thinking brain, our emotional brain, and our survival brain. Now how all of this plays into part is a lot of people have difficulty, including myself at times, communicating our feelings. And a good example is the other day my son was crying and I was trying to get him to communicate, well, why are you crying? What are you feeling? And he couldn't tell me why he was crying. He was just crying. Now all of us as human beings have unresolved, repressed, or suppressed negative feelings. And the truth of the matter is, somehow, somewhere, in some aspect of our life, the effect of these negative feelings will be realized as it surface. And usually it happens during the worst time and when you least expect it. And how deep can these feelings go? Is recent research has shown that even infants at birth can feel the impact of a mother and father's attitudes and feelings of their unborn child. So it goes pretty deep. It just is. The thing is the people who influenced our early childhood development years, yes, I'm sure did the best that they know how. And as a child, we can establish particular perceptions or incorrect references, which therefore our perceptions can become illusions. So whether it's incorrect or not, the perception has been stored in the cells in our DNA, covering our memory of the perfection of our original blueprint of who we are. And with these perceptions, we can carry them for years and often they can create enormous physical, emotional, or mental pain. So our mind in some way has to draw a conclusion for the discomfort, the pain that we felt during the core incident. And then that can create a belief within us. So I'm sure you've heard some of these sayings before. But a lot of us as children were taught to shut off our emotions. You know, man up, men don't cry, children are to be seen, not heard. I mean, that right there is something that was in my childhood. And the truth of the matter is, those feelings don't go away. They do get repressed or suppressed or stuffed or buried down yet they're still inside of us and they're still very much alive. Now the neat thing is science is getting really good with the energy vibrations and yes everything in the universe is energy. Even our thoughts have an energy charge and every thought is independent which affects the field around us. Now let's look at emotional triggers. When a feeling is aroused, it's usually triggered by a belief or a system of beliefs that have been previously established. So for our examples are, let's say a boss wants to talk to you later on the day. And during that day, you could be stewing and stewing. What did I do wrong? Am I going to get fired? Did I make a mistake on this presentation or let's say you you met a guy and the guy says well I'm gonna call you and you give him his number and you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait and he never calls and then self-doubt starts to creep in and you're wondering well did I say something wrong what did I do maybe he just doesn't like me all that stuff so the important thing is to look at our inner dialogue and our self-talk the biggest thing that I've noticed is we are so hard on ourselves. We are harder on ourselves than they would be to our best friend. 
And I literally have said to clients, would you say that to your child? Or would you say that to your best friend that you're stupid? You're incompetent. I'm just a screw up. And of course, everyone says, no, I would never say that. So I have to remind them, well, then why do you say it to yourself? You have to be your own best friend. So we have to be accountable for our our feelings, our thoughts, our emotions, our, our spoken word. And yes, it is very scary when someone confronts us with our own stuff. And the truth of the matter is, everything we do not like in another person is a mirror reflection of something that we do not like in ourselves. So the best thing to do is to go within, to stop looking out there for what's causing the problem, because all the problems we have really is within. Because if it didn't trigger you, it would be a non-issue. Now the cool thing is, our genetics, we are no longer controlled by our genetic potential. So if a family member died of cancer, had a heart attack, got dementia, that does not mean you are a victim of having the same experience. This has already been scientifically proven. It's all in our belief system. So how does hypnosis help me? Hypnosis helps you by getting to the issue. It goes to the painful triggers and removes them. It helps free you from traumas. It can help release you from old, outdated beliefs or even the cultural beliefs that you have. Hypnosis is designed to assist you with utilizing the following techniques like disassociation, installing new positive behaviors or programs, releasing the traumatic memories and triggers that you have, and to really assist you in achieving the goals that you want. So a good example of that is every weight loss client I've worked with, they all know exactly what they could, should be doing in order to lose weight. Some people tell me, I could write a book about weight loss. The fact remains, they are not automatically doing it. Okay, so on the next slide, the question is, why haven't you been able to resolve your problems? And the simple answer is, that restrictive part of you is on autopilot, and it's sabotaging you. And the solution is, Hypnosis takes that part of you that knows better and it brings it forward. So you'll start to automatically eat better, have more positive thoughts, no longer beat yourself up. It's quite refreshing and freeing. Now the thing about hypnosis too is it's like peeling the layers of an onion to get to the whole of who you are. And the older you are, Yes, we can have more layers. That's why it's easier working with kids. And once you remove one layer, there can be a time when a new issue starts to surface that you weren't consciously aware of. But the cool thing is, is once you're consciously aware of it, that's when you have the power and that's when you have the choice to change it. Hypnosis really gives you the tools to free your soul. Hypnosis gives you the tools to find your own identity. It allows you to realize your capabilities and your strengths. And it gives you that confidence you really need to make correct choices by claiming your power back, no longer allowing someone else to control you. And hypnosis is very, very effective. I mean, you could sit on a couch or lie on a couch and talk to your blue in the face. But really, to get free of it, you need to get to the core issue. And hypnosis is very effective and easy. On the next slide, you can see some client testimonials where they have had amazing results. One lady was addicted to Oxycontin. Another lady got a promotion and can handle her day with less stress and it's more refreshing. One gentleman and I actually worked with him before he retired, was 
was an alcoholic. Another lady never felt like she was comfortable in her own skin, and she finally got free of it. And one lady, she thought pain-free sex was like going to be the rest of her life. And not until she was 38 did she finally experience pain-free sex, and it was even fun. And she just got my MP3, and that was only six ninety-five. dollars She spent a lot of years, I'm sure, struggling with that issue. Another one is a high school teacher. She was an amazing, sweet woman. And then this gentleman here who had back pain, and yeah, he... He felt like a failure because he couldn't support his family. And all of these people, they just become free. And to me, that's the wonderful gift of hypnosis that I love to share with you and everyone around this globe is it really can liberate you. And there's nothing more rewarding than that. So thank you for watching and listening to this YouTube video. Hope you have a great week and you take care.